it seems like there's a lot of governmental bodies involved in care. And it would seem like, and I'm wondering, the states that they're involved in certainly must buy lots and lots of carpet and various floor coverings. It would seem like they could become more involved in specifying various products like these pads. That I'm sure on. that most every municipality and government agency, state or federal, has some sort of recycling in their purchase agreement. And you can recycle any of the carpet if it's on a small enough magnitude. But recycling all the polyester it is today is going to take many, many ideals and many, many products to do away with it. I mean, the nylon has been here forever. And they have markets for all of it now. They have some form of end use. And polyester has only been here a few years. So it's going to take recyclers, the carpet industry, everybody coming up with ideals to be able to utilize this waste and utilize it in a large enough volume to where you can make a real dent in the landfill. Mm -hmm. So you have confidence that it's just a matter of time before this takes place, before there is an answer to this. Someone uh, will find an answer. Are there a lot of people out there working on this now? You are. are there I'm people? sure that there's a lot of people working uh, if you hadn't asked a question, I would not have told you that I was working on something. They are very quiet because they don't want to have a perception that they're going to be successful when they may fail. And I may fail. So. Well, Thomas Edison failed a whole lot, yeah, Frank Miller yeah. Light Bulb. I mean, that's just part of developing new products, mm -hmm. I think. And that's. Uh, I'm sure that these carpet mills didn't develop all the products that they sell and all of the colors and everything else without trial and error. You had mentioned working on this uh, polyester situation. Are there other things that you're working on as well in terms of developing new products, new uses? Yes, sir. Can you talk about some of those? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to ask, don't yeah. you? What is the hottest property now in the recycling business? I mean, is, are all these collectors, are all these other processors uh, getting involved in a certain part of the business that they didn't or weren't involved well, in before? The post-industrial nylon and polypropylene are the hottest two commodities out there. I see, I see. And there's been lots of changes inside the mills, as you mentioned, in terms of this. Uh, changes in the amount of waste that they put out per square yard of carpet that they make. They have done a wonderful job in reducing their waste. Mm -hmm. And they also have started reusing a lot of their waste internally. I mean, they're doing their part in recycling. All the mills are. The carpet industry really, as an outside observer, seems to be ahead of a lot of other industries in terms of I would say the so. environmental approach. They are very aggressive on their environmental approach and also to do away or reutilize the waste. I don't know if that's because of Rosalind Anderson and her mouse test of 20 some odd years know. ago, but Whatever it was, the industry has really, I think, been a leader. Where do you see the recycling business going on down the road? What Are there directions that you see it taking that it hasn't taken up to this point? Well, I'm sure there are. I'm sure that there will be new products made in years to come by the carpet industry. I'm sure that they will be new products that we pick up outside the carpet industry to recycle. Mm -hmm. I mean, we recycle everything from uh, polypropylene plastics, where it'd be dog food bags that's been used, uh, super sacks, 
a lot of the things that are used outside of the carpet industry. We okay. recycle that today. Okay. You know, the bags that they put potatoes and oranges and stuff like that in, we recycle those. I see. Where do you get this kind of thing? We buy them from collectors. I see. So they're collectors. Have There's collectors in all different uh, forms of the recycling okay. business. A lot of, some people collect from grocery stores. Some people collect corrugated polypropylene. I see. And sell it to people like us to make polypropylene pellets out of it. And that's just because they happen to have a source for it in their And area. there is a home for it with a recycler. So just the sky's the limit as far as you're concerned. That is on correct. Call, you say, hey, uh, Rocky, can you use some of this? You'll say, sure. Or, I mean... There is an end use for practically any plastic material that is going to landfill today. It's just the fact that no one collects it. I see. Do you see expansion? I mean, could you do what you do somewhere in addition to this? California, New York, or is that a possibility, or you don't need to do that? I guess you don't need to. I could see done. expansion somewhere if I was 10 or 15 years younger. But my partner and I have both have been doing this for 35 years, and you know we've grown this business in Dalton to where it's at, and uh, we're turning it over to the next generation in a few years, and it'll be theirs to keep expanding. Interesting, interesting. It's, it's really interesting. You've been in this so long before anybody ever heard the word re recycling. Just, just the idea yeah. that you saw opportunity in waste when nobody well, else did. I That's used to say recycling wasn't cool, and then it became yeah. that way. You were there way, way before it was cool. Yeah. So you saw an opportunity when, when nobody else did. We saw an opportunity to run products that were going to the landfill that we could get at zero cost and turn into a sellable product. And of course, as soon as you make a product, somebody else start trying to emulate what you do. Mm -hmm. So I guess when you see the price of resin going up, you're just a happy guy then, aren't you? No, sir, because that means waste is going to go up at these mills. Ah. Okay. That means if the resin is going of the nylon chip or the polyester chip or the polypropylene, it's going to cost the mills more. Therefore, it's going to cost me more. And therefore, I'm going to get a higher price than my customer. But, uh, but the that best, makes your product more, more attractive. It makes it? my product more expensive, it does not make it more profitable. It does not make the carpet mills more profitable. Because without the carpet mills, we would not be here today. What, what's your biggest worry uh, day in, day out? Obviously, you've got stuff coming in, you've got stuff going out, you've got to process it in the, in, in the middle, I suppose. if more coming in than you can have go out the other end, that's a problem. But what do you worry about the most? What do I worry about the most? I really have never thought about that. It, uh, it's not something I dwell on. You know, I tackle new things all the time, and I don't worry about what I can't do. Very good, very good. Rocky, you're an you're, you're interesting guy. I'm glad I called you for this yeah. interview. Uh, most, most interesting, a guy who really started the, the recycling business in this industry. and uh, One of the, one of the guys. many people. You and your partner, started. anyway. Uh, me and my partner, but there's other people out there that started other parts of recycling, and we have copied them, and they have copied us, too. Very good. Well, my hat's off to you. Most interesting, most interesting uh, area, your most interesting guy. Are there some things I should have asked you that I didn't? No, sir. I, the main reason I wanted to do this interview is 
to have someone on record stating that they do not believe the carpet mill owes anybody any subsidy or any support in running their own business. And they need they need, they need a business model that shows uh, uh, black Show black. signs that there is a way to make a profit from what they're doing. If you go into something knowing that the only way you're going to succeed is somebody gives you a rebate or a handout, uh, you started a failing business to start with. And there's nobody to blame but yourself. You have to do proper preparation and studies to make sure that what you're going into is proper. All these people just ran out here and just jumped into it without no prior thought or anything else. I hear you. Rocky, I appreciate you spending some time with us. It's been uh, mm -hmm. very enlightening. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. We've been talking with Rocky Ponders, VP at Columbia Recycling in Dalton, Georgia. This is Talk Floor TV.